Hello and welcome to the Doncast, a podcast all about Doncaster. We'll be bringing you interesting conversations that educate and entertain from people across the Doncaster region. If it's happening in Doncaster, it needs to be on the Doncast. So today we're kicking off our trader series where we have traders from across Doncaster Market on the podcast to talk about their business. And our first trader is Dan Wilkinson from Wilkinson Butchers. It's a really interesting conversation between myself and Dan where we talk about Wilkinson Butchers, the business, the traditional family business that's gone through three generations so far. We talk about award-winning sausages and what to do when somebody finally beats you in a sausage competition. And we also ask Dan if he didn't work at Wilkinson Butchers, where across the market would he work? Now remember, you can keep up to date with everything The Doncast on our Facebook page and Instagram. There's also videos on YouTube. If it's just the audio that you're after, then we're across all of the major podcasting platforms. This podcast is sponsored by Market Asset Management, the market operators. Let's get into the conversation. So, Dan, famous Dan Wilkinson from Doncaster Market. Thanks for coming on, mate, because you're the first for the Trader Series. So the first well, trader that we've we're, got. We're always first anyway. Uh, <laughs> so so we'll jump straight in. Um, if you want to introduce, I always find it's better if you introduce yourself, you let us know who you are, what you're about, um, because it always sounds better coming from you because you know more about you than I do. Yeah, yeah, okay. So who My are name's you? Daniel Wilkinson. I'm 40 years old and I'm looking for love. <laughs> <laughs> Comment below um, if you're interested. <laughs> I'm uh, Daniel Wilkinson, uh, Wilkinson Butchers, and we've been on Doncaster Market since 1954, and I am the third generation following my father and my grandfather. Wow. And yeah. what's your? what would you say, because there's as many butchers at the market, but all of them have their own little thing, don't they? They're all quite individual. Is, what's your uh, thing? Well, I think sausages. Um, sausages and sort of ready-to-eat, uh, ready-to-cook meals um you know we've, we've moved into that in, in in sort of the recent past but before that um you know we went into sausages in in, in quite a big way yeah uh you know sort of mail order we went into mail order sausages so we were sending sausages all over the country and did you pick up any awards by any chance yeah one or two one or yeah, two yeah. one or two yeah. oh that, that's something that I, I wanted to ask you about actually um, would you like to tell us the story about the kid that made better sausages than you and what happened to him? <laughs> Once. 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 Yeah. So uh, part of our little team is a, a guy called Rob and uh, first come across Rob at a sausage competition. I don't know, about two, I don't know, 2003, four, something like that. Maybe, maybe a bit later. I can't remember. Yeah. I've been to that many competitions. Anyway. Um, he was from a, a, a relatively local butcher just on outskirts of Doncaster, and um, we used to, you know, we used to we used to go head to head with sort of Doncaster butchers. But it, it was it was uh, they were regional, so they were the, you know the north um, north of England. We went to Yorkshire competition, so that you know there, there, there were lots and lots of butchers there. But we got to talking to to a few of the local lads, and. Yeah. Um, he beat me once. He beat you. <laughs> uh, I beat I beat him. Don't worry, I, I beat him a lot more than he beat me. He beat me once. I beat him a lot. You know, dozens of times. Yeah. But um, what happened after he beat me is we we uh, we employed him. <laughs> That's the only way to do it, isn't it? You know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So he, 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 well, to be fair, he went out of butchering for a bit. Um, he likes his, his biking. He likes BMX and stuff. So yeah. he. Um, he went. He went down that path for a little bit. Fell out of love with butchery, but um, I gave him a call, and yeah. you know, I found out he was he was on the market, if you like. Uh, and, and now he is request. on the market. <laughs> <laughs> now he's on the market. Yeah, yeah literally. <laughs> That's brilliant. Um, what I like to do early on in the conversations as well is just drop in the social medias because what a lot of people do is they leave it to the end, but people might not listen right to the end when they know it's finishing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. where's where predominantly, where do we find you on, on social media? 
Uh, we're, we're more active on Facebook than anything than anything else on social. Um, trying to get into Instagram, but it's just another job to do. And uh, you know, we we we're lucky in the fact that we you know we're a busy little firm. So mm. I get my videos and me and me posts out on 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 Facebook. Do a bit of scheduling, um, and you can see me now and again on Instagram. But but you know, the lion's share is is Facebook, and yeah. I like to do my videos. Yeah, Facebook's king for local businesses, I think. It works. Um, yeah, it works. It does. And, and I notice as well, because obviously with me doing the Doncaster Market Facebook and stuff, um, you you get a really good, like almost like a cult following, like uh, when it's local, because it's almost like people are like, that's my butcher. I shop with that butcher. He's, he's my butcher. You do. You, and you, you, you get you a real get good people, strong. Yeah. yeah. If, if you have a, you know, somebody, I'm not saying somebody has a little dig, but somebody, you know, somebody might say, well, you know, I prefer him. And then, and then, you know, one of, one of your customers has got your back because yeah. <laughs> they have a little battle, battle between themselves, but it's, it, it's instant and it's, it's a community. Um, yes. You know, my own personal sort of business page is, 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 is our community, but, but then within, within that, you've, you've got the markets Facebook page, which, um, you know, some of my customers shop elsewhere as well as, as shopping with me. So they're mm-hmm. the proper market customers. Yeah, and that it, it, it ties in brilliantly. You know, it's a it is it, it's it's like a market day without being on a market day. Yeah, it is. It is. So you you said before that you're third generation for the for the third, family yeah. the family business. So I don't know if that ties into then the next question of why do you do what you do. I imagine you were thrown in there at an early age or did you not get pushed into it and you just happen to love it no, anyway? Yeah, it's just, I get, I've, I've been asked this question a lot of times and I was never pressured, never pressured at all. Um, I was I was taught the value of money from a young age. So if I wanted something, I had to do chores around the house or mm-hmm. as my dad used to say, well, I've got a job for you at work if you want to come. Yeah. So yeah, um, you know, sort of nine, ten years old, I'd, I'd be, I'd be helping out, probably getting in the way, but I thought I were helping out, yeah, uh, earning a bit, a bit of change, and liked it, liked the atmosphere of the market. Um, couldn't really, you know, when I look back now, I can't see what else I would have done because I like, you know, I enjoy it that much, yeah. but I was, I was never pressured, but because I am an only child and there was always that thing sort of in the back of my head, whereas if I didn't go into it, then it would just fizzle out. Right, yeah. Probably, you know, look, you know, as, as, as I'm, you know, I'm sat here as a 40-year-old now, my me, me dad's 63, so he's sort of getting towards retirement. Wilkinson Butchers, if I didn't go into it, could have been just about closing up now. Yeah, coming which, to an end. You know, it's quite sad, but uh, but that's... That's family businesses, you know. Some some keep going, some don't. Yeah. Um, we're we you know we're we're the longest established family butcher in there. So that's testament Drop to, that to everybody who's been involved. Yeah, yeah. definitely. So um, thinking about that, then what about your lads? Because I've seen your, I think the video I saw of one of your sons was when he were about ten, linking the sausages, yeah, yeah, yeah. and he were like pro pro level already. He's a little grafter. Um, I've, I'm lucky. I've, I've got two sons, um, chalk and cheese. Uh, one of them is well, he's, he's upstairs now with a laptop in bits, fixing a laptop. You know. That's, wow. No, no, I have, I have no idea. <laughs> they just walk in and it just looks a mess, and then it, then he puts it together and it works. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's not to do with me. Um, and 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 my youngest, he he's he's sort of hands on manual, likes to get stuck in, likes to get grafting, and and wanted to come to work. Still wants to come to work. Mm. Uh, don't want to do Zoom schooling. He wants no, no. he wants to come to work. So, um, but I, I, the same will good good to them. You know, I, I won't pressure them at all. It's there if they want it. Yeah. Um, there's a lot easier careers out there, but um, it's it's the doors open. Yeah, as it was for me. Yeah. And uh, it'd be nice, I suppose. Like secretly, you're like, I, I hope one of them does run with this, just to keep it going. Yeah, so you know, yeah, what are we now? We're sixty, sixty five, sixty six years established. So you know, you you, you start you start having to think, can we get to hundred? You know, yeah. yeah. A little bit of selfish bit of side of me is, is like, can we? You know, can we get it to a hundred? Yeah. You know, I'd be an old man if I got it there, but, um, <laughs> you know, it, it, it's got potential. It could do. Yeah. Why not? That would be incredible. 
I mean, yeah. I don't know what sort of social media, whether it's Facebook, I don't know what's happening <laughs> in that time, but it'd be incredible to advertise that. Been going a hundred yeah, yeah. years, yeah. that would be. Well, I, re- I, rem- I remember us turning 50 and it were a big thing, you know, we, we had all banners done and, and uh, letterheads were, you know, all went out, established 50 years. Mm. And, you know, now we're, now we're 65, 66, 66, aren't we? Yeah, so, 66 yeah, years. Yeah, it's on its way. That is brilliant. That is brilliant. Um, so we've obviously everybody knows we've just had one of the worst years in recent memory, recent times. Well, it is the worst year in recent times, I'd say, probably in the last 50 to 70 years. What's been the biggest challenge for you, do you think, as a as a business or or personally? Um well, both things is, is staying safe. That's the that's the biggest challenge because we haven't got a lot of room, you know, in 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 those market units. So so the biggest challenge has been being COVID secure, COVID safe, keeping keeping the staff as far apart within that little area that we've got, mm-hmm. uh, and keeping everybody, you know, everybody sort of working efficiently. So that's that's been one side of it. The other side is. On the first lockdown, I sort of, we, you know, we have a, a few um, part-time ladies that work for us. I said to them, are they safe, you know, do they feel safe at work? Um, you know, because I'm not going to force anybody to come to work if they don't want to. No. And uh, they all said, no, they wanted to go home on furlough. <laughs> <laughs> so um, <laughs> so we, we, went, we went from sort of six staff to, to like two. Wow. Um, and... And, and back then as busy. well, back then in we're talking April twenty twenty. Uh, yeah, March April. March it, yeah. April, and that's when, to be fair, the the market, the entire market, the essentials bit, the food bit. I say essential; it's all essential to us. But the food yeah. bit that's deemed essential um, nationwide, it actually went bang. It, it went. It didn't go less. It went much more busy, didn't it? So you've gone from how many six to two, and we went, one yeah, of the busiest we, we, periods. The, there was there was that there was that first I can't remember how it fell in the week but there was the first sort of two or three days um, where there was this big rumor of lockdown um, and 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 to be fair I'd ne- I've never sold as much I was selling I was selling a you know a week's worth of meat a day uh, we were traveling you know we were traveling in early hours to to our suppliers to to you know to to just load up. Because they couldn't get to us because there, there were that many butchers crying out. Yeah. Supermarkets had run out of meat. Mm. Um, their supply chains are huge. As uh, pick a phone up, yeah, drive to you know drive, drive to Rawdon at Leeds, pick some beef up, you know, that quick. Yeah. Um, but I, I but you know I I had to do it in 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 the the, the dark of night. <laughs> wow. So yeah, it, it was it was that was challenging. It was it was fun. Because obviously, at the end of the day, we're a little business, and we need to keep the till ringing. Yes. So, we were busy. Um, it was a challenge to get hold of meat, not only to to get just meat, but with the, another coming back to what what's in that market. We've got different styles of butchers. So, you know, we've got budget butchers and we've got craft butchers. You know, we've 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 got all different styles, and and the style of meat that, that a couple of us sell in there, it's not easy to come by. Yeah. It's not just you know ship it in and sell it cheap. It, it, it's it's of a high standard and and you know you don't get to be in business for that long uh, as as we are by selling anything. So it had yeah. to be of a standard, and and it was hard to do. So that's another you know there's, there's been loads of challenges in 2020. Yeah. Um, How did you find the transition to? Because at that point as well, last year you moved into delivery. Is that the? Am I right in thinking that's the first time you've gone into delivering? Or had you done it no, previously no, before? No, you, you, no, sorry. Well, I'll pull you up on that one. Go um, on, please do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've always done deliveries. Right. Um, we've, we've, the, the deliveries have changed somewhat because, um, you know, going back to my, my granddad's day, the butcher, you know, the butcher on his bike always was delivering. So, oh. so my granddad always delivered. Yeah. Um, my dad in the, sort of through the eighties and, and early nineties, the they did the what they called the deep freeze packs, which you see meat packs these days, but they're they're not new. They they they've just been adapted. So yeah. in the olden days, uh, I say olden days, he's, he's not going to like that, is he? <laughs> um, 
the, the the customers used to used to you know the, the freezers became popular big big chest freezers became popular so so people used to buy big quantities of meat which they'd get a better value mm-hmm. and freeze it down but obviously there'd be that much meat they'd have to be delivered yeah so so yeah me, me every generation of us has, has, has done deliveries yeah um it's just that we probably don't shout about it as much as we did at that period yes. um, and and you know like say facebook was it was a massive tool for us so we, we used it yeah yeah mm-hmm. that's it yeah i've noticed then um that delivery is just across the market in general as well there's a lot of people that have introduced it for the first time there's a lot of people yeah. like yourselves then that maybe were doing it but it weren't quite as common knowledge not in your face whereas now everybody's like we're doing delivery and everyone's pushing it out and um, yeah yeah and, yeah, it, and yeah. i think it's great i think it's brilliant well obviously it's brilliant because it's a lot of people are relying on that now um and i think it's it's upped the the value of our market just across the entire board because it's it's, it's even more accessible it's got it out now there. yeah it's got it out there you know Doncaster market's on tour the <laughs> the slight issue i have with it is if you push it that far and make it that easy for people, will they ever come back? Will they, you know, will they, will they use the market? Yeah. And that's, that's where, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm worried is the wrong word, but I, I'm, I'm just a little skeptical whether, you know, whether, whether we, we should be, should we be pushing it that hard for delivery? I know, I know there's a safety issue. Yeah. Um, I, um, so my thinking behind it is, I think that's just a, uh, that's a bit of, say, collateral that we have to deal with after this whole lockdown yeah, yeah. Uh, scenario. Yeah. But for me, the one thing that you can't... Well, once everyone's been locked down for a year, pretty much, on and off, yeah, yeah, yeah. people are yeah. going to be chomping at the bit to go back out. And when they do go back out, they are very much thinking about where they're spending the money, which I think is a huge advantage to us at the market. Because Definitely. now, rather than going to XYZ supermarket... I yeah. remember that Dan Wilkinson sorted me out. His customer service was excellent. And when I really needed my butcher to step up and get stuff to me, he did. So now we're all allowed back out. I'm I'm support I know where I'm going all the time. That time. Yeah, of thing. no, I think I think you're right, Dave. I think I think you're right. It's um, I hope I'm right. You are, you are right. <laughs> because to be fair, when things did get relaxed, um we did see, we, you know, we we did say a, see a massive surge of footfall back into the market, and mm-hmm. and 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 along with that, my regulars that came back. See, we've got we've we've got two shops. We've got one on on the outskirts of the market. So some of the customers that I'd not seen for a while, they were going up there mm-hmm. uh, to see my dad's shop. So, you know, we we were we were catching them somewhere, if you like. Yeah. Um, but but we have picked up because of these deliveries that we were doing. We have picked some new faces up, and and like you say, they 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 did come to the market because we you know we we sorted them out, we helped them out, um, and and they've they've come back to help us. It's just I just you know I yeah. I don't know. I just I just sort of side on the edge of caution where you know where if you make it too convenient for people to stay at home, yeah, they will. <laughs> yeah, it's something we'll have to see. We'll have to work yeah, with it. But I'm sure I've never been so sure about it. I anything. think once we, once we get everything back up and running, you know, and, and that wool market gets open and it's a sense of occasion and people can come out and have something to eat and have something to drink, then they'll come back to the market. Yeah, we'll, and we'll, we'll keep doing don't our listen videos. To me. Don't listen to me. I'm, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep doing our videos as well. I'm tired. <laughs> our behind the scenes videos will keep dragging people in, don't worry. <laughs> um, so the next question that I've got is, uh, so at this minute, then I, sp- I I usually ask, have you got anything to plug in terms of like a new service, a new product that you've got? But um, we've we've obviously just plugged that you're doing delivery. So if you want your meat, yeah, we've, pl- we've plugged that. That yeah, deliveries are del- deliveries are still there. I'll um, plug a product for you if you can't pick one out. On. Welsh Dragon sausages. Yeah, yeah. incredible. He likes them, doesn't he? Incredible. I've yeah. had a few portions of them now. They are the, the for me. They're the best. Of my sausage. Yeah, I have. I have. <laughs> <laughs> I had to slip one in well. somewhere. You've got well, and again. <laughs> <laughs> so no Welsh dragon sausage. So so when you're saying sausages, uh, like me before, naively I'm thinking, oh, I mean a sausage is a sausage, and then I am introduced to the market. I'm introduced to you, and I'm like, a sausage isn't just a sausage. There's lots of different sausages with lots of yeah. different tastes. For me, Welsh yeah. Dragon 
Uh, I don't know. Do you want to tell people what's what's in the Welsh Dragon sausage? Uh, Welsh, Welsh Dragon is it's been it's been copied up and down the country now. Um, obviously, there's lots of lots of butchers are linked in with with social media, and we talk about all our different recipes. But uh, Welsh Dragon is a it's a it's, it's one of the original like specialities, um, you know, of the modern of the, of the modern gourmet sausage, yeah. and it's a pork sausage with leek and a kick of chili. It's Welsh a kick. Dragon. And it's a nice kick. though. I like it because it's not. It don't blow your mouth off. No, there's just enough. It's just enough in, where you're like, oh, this is lovely. Sort of mid '90s when we first came, you know, came across it, started making it. It was quite a hot sausage that because there was nothing, you know, in our diet that we were eating as, as you know, with, with lots of chilies in. Since we've moved further forward and 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 tastes have changed and and you know the you know. You know, I, I, I'm going to say world travel, but obviously we were we were traveling before, but yeah. People, people's knowledge towards chili has changed. Yeah, um, I, I remember when we first started doing the Welsh Dragon, and, and um, a, a lady, you know, she must have been, a, you know, well up on a, a food knowledge. What type of chili is it? And I'd be, I don't know, I'd be about 15, 16 at the time, and I was like, it's, it's just chili powder. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you know, it's just a chili. Yeah, but. Uh, but you know, going forward, uh, you know, we've all learned of different chilies, and you've got, you know, your habaneros, and your, um, your, I can't even say, you've got your ghost chilies, and, and yeah. uh, scorpion chilies, and scotch bonnets. So we, we've learned about different chilies, and that's why we've sort of took the Welsh dragon up a stage, and we we call we just call it the hot one, and that's oh. got lots of different chilies in. So so yeah, going back to your Welsh dragon, that was our chili sausage. Mm-hmm. But we, yeah, we've we've moved in front of that one. If you like your chili, yeah. What mm. is your favourite sausage? Yours personally, have you got a favourite? Yeah, but it changes like daily. <laughs> 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 now it, it it always comes back. There's the, there's only one sausage, um, and it's the country pork that we do. It's my granddad's recipe, um, and it's a pork sausage with a sage and onion stuffing like with it. So it's like a if you like, it's an unbelievably meaty sage and onion stuffing. Yeah. Um, and it can work everywhere. It can work as a meatball. It can work as a sausage. It can work in a sandwich. It can work with bangers and mash. You know, it, it can go in a casserole. It can go on a barbecue. It works in every single scenario. I'm so hungry And now. we had that for my wedding. When me and my wife got married, we had bangers and mash and we had country pork. That is brilliant. What a story. The that sausage. Is. That the is sausage. Quality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it yeah. sounds lovely. Um, I, I might, I'll get one of them next. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get on it. <laughs> so, my last question then. Mm-hmm. Let's pretend. Oh, let's pretend. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> let's pretend Wilkinson Butcher's not there. Right. But, but Dan Wilkinson, you, you've got to work in the market. Where yeah. else are you going to work? You can only choose one place across any of the market. Have I got to work for somebody or can I, I set my own shop up? No, no, no. you got to work <laughs> for somebody who's current in the market. Um, I'd work for Ryan Davis because he just seems to stand around playing on his phone all day, so that seems all right. <laughs> oh, shots fired, <laughs> shots fired. <laughs> Well, I'm actually speaking to Matthew um, yeah, in well, the next Matthew episode. Yeah, a little bit more work than Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, uh, I actually, should let him watch what? this. I'd probably, work, I'd probably work in a cafe because it's warmer. You reckon? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'd, I was just thinking then, please don't ask me where I'd work because I literally have no idea. And now you've got, you've got me. You've got me. I don't know. I don't know. I like my job that much. I don't really look at anything else. Yeah. Laser focused on them sausages. Uh, genuinely though thank you very much uh, I know that um, it's not everybody's cup of tea uh, with the traders across the market that I talk to as much as I possibly can when I'm around um, I know that there's a few people that will definitely love doing this like you're you're not shy of the camera at all um, and there's a couple of <laughs> others which is good benefits me obviously and, and this platform but this has been the Doncast and it's been the Trader Series with Dan Wilkinson from Wilkinson Butchers um, and thank you. that's been brilliant thanks for joining me Dan 
thank you thank you for having me no problem so there it is thank you very much for listening to the podcast or watching the podcast depending where you are please like follow subscribe depending on what platform you're on and follow us on social media this podcast was sponsored by market asset management the market operators and remember to follow the journey of the podcast studio that's being built currently in the wool market in Doncaster, where we'll be recording so I'm not stuck here in my one-year-old's bedroom for much longer. You can follow the journey across the social media channels. Just search The Doncast. And we'll see you in the next episode.